The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to the Church of the Ascension here in Timalee. My name is Kingsley and I welcome anyone joining us online today, especially to Sadie in Spain. If you're watching today, I'm thinking of you. We're thinking of you. Anyway, it's lovely to be gathered here in God's presence and hopefully we'll have that sense of God's presence as we pray, as we worship and as we take part. And uh, the opening hymn this morning, well, it reflects a little bit on this verse we were looking at this last week from Revelation chapter 8, where it talks about holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And we're saying it just seems so repetitive. We're not kind of used to that in our kind of world here of repeating things again and again, because day and night they would say, let's say day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy. is to come but you see we're not seeing what the angels are seeing and those who've gone to heaven are seeing we haven't seen the beauty and the glory of god and that's why this opening hymn hopefully we can play it here now uh, it talks about the holiness of god and open the eyes of my heart open the eyes of my heart Beloved in 
Christ, we are to come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear God's holy word proclaimed, to bring before God our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of the Spirit we may serve God and know the greatness of God's love. So let us now be seated or kneel, and let us confess our sins to God our Father. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So as forgiven children, we stand and say, O Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As well as we can be now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We'd like to be seated for our first Bible reading today. Darren's going to read it. Thank you. It's a very small print of this thing, so I'll fix it. Excuse the screen. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of, your, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I shall have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we've been learning a few new songs of late, and this is one of the ones that we've been learning, and it's all about just knowing God as a good, good Father. And uh, I don't know what your experience of fatherhood is like. Maybe you had a lovely dad, and that's really good. Uh, maybe you didn't. Um, the idea of fatherhood is, uh, for different people, can mean different things. But Jesus chose to address God as Father, and we know that we can trust him. And he also showed us that God is a good, good father. And that's what this song is all about. Yes, you can stand as we sing it if you like. <laughs>
to be seated for our gospel reading today. And it's from Matthew chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. And perhaps you've heard this reading before, and I just thought of a new angle on it today. We'll see how it works, whether it fits or not, you can decide. But let's hear the reading to begin with. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early one morning to have workers to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and he saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon, and again, at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in the town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. And that evening he told the foreman to call the workers and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those came first came to get no, when those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more. But they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those who worked only one hour, only one again. Those people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you have paid us, who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay the last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. And Lord, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to us afresh today to give us new and fresh understanding of your word and how it applies to us in our world. Have your way among us, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So yes, the parable of the vineyard just doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> At least that's what seems to come across. And I don't know whether any of us have ever worked in a vineyard. Maybe some of you have, I don't know. But I'm sure it's quite kind of hard work. And certainly back in the day, it involved a lot of people. People were needed to harvest the grapes and gather them all in. And you can sort of see the joy on this person's face here uh, as they gather in the harvest. But I was reminded of a verse in Jeremiah 8 and verse 20 where it says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. And how that harvesting and working in the vineyard can apply to something at a bigger scale. And not just about harvesting of fruit, but as it were, the people. Are we saved? And as I look through this parable, I was thinking, you know, what is the most important outcome in this parable. And I wonder, now we can't extrapolate too much out of a parable because it will have its limitations, but I was just thinking, is it not that the work got done? You know, so often we get hung up on the wages and who gets paid what or whatever, but is it not that there was a day's work done and the work got done in the harvest field and the harvest was gathered in? And uh, any farmers among us will realize, actually, at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want to get the harvest gathered in, no matter what it takes. As we often sing at our harvest Thanksgiving, all is safely gathered in. But what if someone's <coughs> left behind? 
And uh, I love this shot of a combine. I don't know how they cut it so precisely that the left, exactly the width of the header on the combine to do that last bit there. That was some going indeed. But what if the guy who was operating the combine said, well, that's it, my time's up, I'm away, and just left that behind? I don't think we'd be impressed at all. And in today's world, I'm not too sure how it works, whether you pay a contractor per acre or per hour, but I'd imagine if they didn't finish the job, you wouldn't be for paying them at all. <laughs> Let's get the job done. Now, Paul, when he was writing to the church in Philippi, he says, for me, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. So he's talking about, you know, dying, not to be afraid of dying. Dying is gain if we're in Christ. But if I am to live in the flesh, he says, that means fruitful labor for me. Paul had a great sense that while you're here, you're here to work. <laughs> you're here to see the kingdom gathered in or the harvest gathered in. And when I look at this parable, I wonder why that last line is sort of thrown in. And I, this is where I guess I'm kind of building my hypothesis on. When Jesus said at the very end of the parable, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And at the end of the day, it's all about the kingdom of God and people being drawn in to the kingdom. And uh, what is that about? It's about everyone being saved. Every single soul, every single person, no one left behind. And whether they're first or whether they're last, it doesn't matter because they're all gathered in and we're all happy that the harvest has been saved. We're all saved. And what do we mean by saved? Well, chiefly, it's about knowing Jesus. Not knowing about Jesus, but knowing Jesus at a personal level where each person has made a choice to follow Jesus, to pray to Jesus, to walk with Jesus in their life. Jesus, not as a kind of optional extra that uh, comforts us as he does in those highs or, or in particularly in the lows of life, but an everyday experience of Jesus. And what is that like? It's like Jesus is your all in all. Or as Paul would say it, living is Christ. Christ, it's all about Jesus, living with him, praying to him, being in conversation with Jesus right throughout the day. Um, we know people who love talking. <laughs> Maybe we're one of them, I don't know. But it's really about talking to Jesus and loving that relationship, that ongoing relationship with Jesus. So I kind of wanted to conclude by talking about our own families. And do our own families know and trust Jesus? And particularly for parents, maybe we're concerned for our children and to what extent have they owned the faith that we've tried to encourage them in. But if they don't know Jesus and if they're not living with him on a day-to-day -day basis, chances are they really don't know Jesus. And it is just kind of a religion or it's kind of that extra that you can have if you want an optional extra. Have they really lost sight of what it's all about? Have we as a church sold them short and not helped them to enter into an everyday living experience of Jesus? Well, if they don't know and trust in Jesus, then I would say that the harvest is not fully gathered in and that surely then Jesus is looking to hire people who will help him. And it doesn't matter what particular hour we might have come along in this journey, but we're all invited to get involved in that. Our job is not done. So even if we're the Johnny come lately's at five o'clock in the afternoon, what can we do? We can pray and we can name people before God in our prayers. Maybe you're doing this already. Well, I encourage you to keep up, keep on praying specifically. Call out to God the names of those who are on your hearts. It is a, a spiritual thing. It is a, a prayerful thing. Yeah, and, and as we lift people's names in, in our prayers to God, surely God will hear those prayers. I mean, Jesus died for these, our friends, our family members. Surely it's his delight to answer our prayers, as it is the delight of a landowner to see the harvest being gathered in. But he's looking for harvesters. 
He's looking for people who will get involved. So are we prepared to literally fight for them and wrestle for them in prayer? Well, Paul, when he was writing to the church of Philippi, he says, you know, God has granted us this privilege of not only believing in Christ, but even suffering for him as well. And I don't know whether you have prayed to the extent where you even suffer in prayer. Where you're literally just saying, God, please, please, and you're groaning. We can suffer in that way for prayer. We can suffer in our lifestyle as we live for God and choose to lay down our lives for God. Fight the good fight is the old hymn, isn't it? Fighting the good fight because there's work to be done. The parable of the landowner and vineyard. I suggest to us today is about not just one day. It's talking about that eternal day when everyone is gathered in. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Doesn't matter whether they come late or they come early. They're all gathered in to the kingdom. And who paid the price? And so we'll just finish with this. In this parable, there is a landowner. And in this parable, there is someone who pays the money. <laughs> of course, we think of Jesus. And we think of what he paid for us in his lifeblood, his life laid down for us. The cost has been paid. We can't earn our way into the kingdom. And I guess that's another thing in this parable we see. It's kind of a level playing field. Those who are hired all get the same. Doesn't matter when they come in. And as we're gathered into the kingdom, as we become children of God, we all get the same. And it's at the cost of Jesus gift of eternal life. What a kingdom we're part of. But isn't it terrible to think we might just keep this for ourselves? Isn't it terrible that we might just sort of say, well, the combine is, well, I'm nearly finished now, and we leave a strip in the field and go off. No, that's not what we're called to do. We're here to suffer and pray and groan for those in prayer. We are all invited to be part of this gathering up of the kingdom of God. Let's bow our heads in prayer a moment. Lord Jesus, sometimes we feel very inadequate and we, we look at our own in, inadequacies as to how you may or may not use us. But Lord, as you saw those guys hanging around at five o'clock in the afternoon, you said, yeah, come on, come and work in my vineyard. And Lord, you invite us in, no matter who we are, and you reward us all the same with that relationship with you and all that Jesus has done for us and won for us through the cross. Help us to invite others into the kingdom. Help us to be able to draw others into that living relationship with you, Lord Jesus, that we would see the harvest fully gathered in. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. 
Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. And your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless those who have children. And give peace in our time, O Lord. And then give glory to your Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. O Lord, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, who name before you their loved ones, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also have the grace and power faithfully to fulfill them, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we continue in prayer in our intercessions as we pray for the church. We pray for Paul, our bishop, for all the clergy of our diocese as they meet for a pre-ordination retreat that's happening tomorrow. And we pray for the ordination of Martin to the cathedral. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon him as he prepares for that special day. <coughs> And as we pray for the church in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Mallow and for Merrick Williams and for all who minister there with him. We also pray for the Dean and Chapter of Cloyne Cathedral and for Andrew Orr and all who work and live there, that they may gather the harvest safely in. Lord, in your mercy. As we pray for the governments of the world, we pray for the work of the United Nations. We think of how our own Taoiseach representing Ireland spoke so boldly and candidly at the United Nations this week and how that Russia should be held to account for all that's going on in Ukraine. Lord, we know there are many atrocities that are happening at a minor but also at a major level. And again, we pray for a swift end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for the protection of all human life, all life indeed, as they suffer the effects of war. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those in need of any kind. And we now name before God those who are in our hearts today, either silently or out aloud, as we name them before God. Pray for Peggy. And Lord, we pray for all those who have been recently bereaved. As we pray for those for whose anniversaries have been recent and uh, we think of Daisy Coombs whose seven year anniversary was just last week. We think of Gordon, his brother and sisters. We pray for those more recently bereaved as we pray for the family of Willie Dean and also Margaret Sweetman. Lord, in your mercy. We take just a few more moments in silence to offer to God any other personal prayers or requests. And Lord, keep us prayerful. Keep us naming those who are dear to us. Naming them before you that all will be gathered into your kingdom and into a living relationship with Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Well, a few announcements to run past you. We've got Harvest Thanksgiving this morning in Kimmelude now at 10 o'clock. But also at 8.30 tonight, we have a special Harvest Healing Service. Oh, there will be prayers for healing. And uh, Lorraine, who's here with us today, is going to be sharing her story of how God healed her just recently. Uh, of a skin disease that she's had for 42 years, I think you told me. And at a recent prayer uh, service that we had, uh, she went up for prayer. And you'll get to hear her story tonight if you come along at 8.30 to Kilmaluda. And it's just remarkable. We're looking forward to hearing it. Thank you.
This afternoon, you're invited to go to the Festal Evensong. That's happening at St. Finbar's as they celebrate 1400 years of St. Finbar. And if you happen to know anyone who has the name Finbar or Barry or any other version of that, they go along, they'll get a gift, a special gift from the church uh, for that. There's a clothing collection happening at Kilgariff School, uh, and if you have loads of clothes to unload, uh, you can give it in before Wednesday of this week and uh, get it to the school, and it'll be used as a fundraiser for it. No duvets or pillows, please, but there's a whole list of things that you can give. Uh, this is the uh, chap who's being ordained, Martin Steele, who's getting ordained on Monday, and before that, the bishop has invited all the clergy of his diocese together for a pre-ordination retreat, uh, so we keep them all in our prayers as well. <laughs> Little Treasures, our Apprentice Tantra Group, meets tomorrow morning between 10 and 11.30 as usual. It's the Whist Drive. Our monthly Whist Drive will be on tomorrow evening at 8.30 in the parochial hall. It happens on the last Monday of every month, and this is the last Monday, believe it or not. We're nearly getting to the end of September. As you know, we're looking forward to a special weekend of events happening between the 10th and the 12th of November this year. As Bishop Harold and his wife Liz come and share, us, uh, share with us, we've been organising some really good things so far, but we're not going to tell you. Hopefully next week we'll be able to tell you all the things that have been planned, but it's not too late to come along to our planning meeting. Uh, if you want to join us, we're meeting on Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock, the earlier time at 8 o'clock in the parochial hall to pray and to plan and to look forward to a great move of God's Spirit, we hope. <laughs> and then on Thursday, we've got uh, our Holy Communion that happens on a monthly basis in Clonakilty Hospital. On a weekly basis, there's the community bingo in our hall at 8.30. Gosh, I'm flying through it here, aren't I? And then next Sunday, our services, see, we're into October, and uh, we have morning prayer at 10 o'clock here, so we'll invite you back, those of you who are online, can join us at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning or 11.30 at Kilgariff Church. And uh, we've got that to look forward to. And just some advance notice then, Friday week we've got Harvest Thanksgiving happening in uh, Clonakilty, where our preacher will be Adam Pullen, who is the new minister in Dunmanway. So it's a chance for us to get to know and to meet him. And if you'd like to support the work of our churches, you can do so online by clicking the portal at the top of our Facebook page there. And uh, there is an offering we'll gather up. If you want to leave it in the basket here today, that would be really good. That's just at the back of the church. Let's pray for God's blessing upon us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you invite us into the work of your kingdom. As we name people before you in prayer, as we live the life that you've called us to, we pray that you would gather in many people into your kingdom. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Imagi if we hear corn, can grow a good service, a word than Amen.